Voyager in, in some very real sense is, is material that's not from the medium in which it finds itself. Voyages 1 and 2, which were initially intended to operate for only five years, have far exceeded that expected time frame and have given our scientists many new revelations about our own solar system. Neptune has a large region known as the Great Dark Spot that is comparable in size to Jupiter's Great Red Spot. And Voyager 1 and 2 determined that Neptune's magnetic field is tilted on its side. NASA still maintains contact with the spacecrafts that are far from the orbits of the solar system's planets, even after 40 years have elapsed. However, in recent years, Voyager 2 has unearthed something about our solar system that has never been observed before by any previous satellite or spacecraft technology. But what precisely is this great dark spot? How does it impact the magnetic field of Neptune? And what is this shocking new discovery? The History of Voyager 2 Voyager 2 and Voyager 1 were initially designed to endure only five years. Despite the fact that both spacecraft were launched in 1977, more than 40 years ago, they have remarkably lived longer than expected. Each spacecraft was designed to gather audio and visual information about the planets and their associated satellites that can be found in our solar system. In 1979, Jupiter was discovered by Voyager 2, and in 1981, Saturn was. Voyager 2 successfully captured more than 8,000 photos of Uranus and its moons after rotating around the planet in front of it. When the shuttle finally reached Neptune a few years later, it took an even more stunning 10,000 pictures of the planet and its 14 moons. When NASA scientists finally obtained all of these photographs from Voyager 2, they discovered some fascinating new data about each planet, with Jupiter and Neptune receiving the most attention. The Secrets of Jupiter and Neptune Using the combined cameras of the two Voyagers, the NASA team discovered changes in the huge planet, including a drift in the Great Red Spot, as well as changes in its shape and color. At least 80% of Callisto's surfaces have been mapped out at a resolution of around 3 miles. Neptune has a gigantic patch dubbed the Great Dark Spot that is equivalent in size to Jupiter's Great Red Spot, and Voyager 2 also determined that the planet's magnetic field is tilted on its side. The next step was a near encounter with Triton, the largest moon of Neptune that had previously been identified. Six new moons that orbit the planet were discovered by Voyager 2 along the route. These were all fascinating discoveries in and of themselves, but it wasn't until late 2018 that the Voyager 2 detected a cosmic anomaly, the frontier of our solar system that had never been seen before. The Secrets of the Heliosphere The Discovery That Shocked NASA Six years after its twin, Voyager 1 made the same trek into interstellar space. NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft achieved the crossing on November 5, 2018. It discovered something intriguing and novel there that its predecessor had missed. The probe's journey from the Sun's main zone of influence into the space surrounding stars, known as the interstellar space, has been studied in detail by astronomers for the past year. The heliopause, which separates these two worlds, is a fluid setting. This is where the Sun created bubble-like electromagnetic barriers that enclose our solar system and collide with galactic cosmic rays, which are composed of high-energy particles from alien stars and distant galaxies. The only man-made objects to have ever traveled through this turbulent region between the Sun and the stars are the Voyager probes. The Voyager 2 probe found a previously unidentified border just outside the heliopause, according to a team led by Edward Stone, a Caltech professor of physics and the project scientist on the Voyager program since its inception in the 1970s. The twin probes returned many similar observations, but Voyager 2 made the discovery. The researchers had no idea how long it would take to go to the heliosphere's outer edge when the mission first began. According to Edward Stone, we didn't know how large the bubble was, how long it would take to get there, and if the spacecraft would last long enough, now we're studying the very local interstellar medium. It's a very exciting time in Voyager's 41-year journey. But the researchers also found a point where the gradient of cosmic rays from the far beyond and the lower energy particles, typical of familiar environment near our sun, shifted, which they refer to as a cosmic ray boundary layer. There is proof that Voyager 1 also came across one of these boundary layers of cosmic rays, but intriguingly, it was situated inside the heliopause. 
There appear to be cosmic ray boundary layers on both sides of the heliopause, with the outer one only being evident at the position of Voyager 2, Stone's team said in the study. This cosmic ray boundary layer on the outside of the heliopause was not evident at the place and time where Voyager 1 crossed it. What is the heliopause? We must first define the heliopause in order to comprehend how significant this discovery is. The Sun is a dynamic star that is always undergoing change and radiating energy into space. Heliophysics is the study of the Sun and how it affects the rest of the solar system. The Sun is made up of six layers. The core radiative zone, the convective zone, the photosphere, the chromosphere, the corona, and the heliopause. Between 250 and 1,300 miles above our solar surface, there is a layer in the Sun called the chromosphere. Beginning at a height of 1,300 miles or more above the solar surface, the corona is the Sun's outermost layer. The corona has a temperature of at least 500,000 Kelvin. The photosphere extends up to 250 miles above the visible surface at the solar disk center. The heliopause, commonly referred to as empty space, is the line separating the solar influence from the interstellar medium, which is filled with gas, dust, and cosmic rays. Voyagers 1 and 2 are currently just outside of this line. In 2012, Voyager 1 arrived to the heliosphere's periphery. More than 70% of that radiation is shielded from the Earth and the other planets by the heliosphere. What makes this recent discovery so important? According to Eddie Stone, the Voyager probes are demonstrating to us how our Sun interacts with the matter that primarily occupies the interstellar space in the Milky Way galaxy. Without these fresh data from Voyager 2, we wouldn't be able to determine if what we saw with Voyager 1 was typical of the entire heliosphere or unique to the precise moment it crossed. Due to the fact that there was only one sample of these magnetic fields available, researchers were unable to determine if the apparent alignment truly represented the entire outside region or if it was merely a coincidence. The team expected to see significant differences in the direction of the magnetic field outside the heliosphere compared to the one inside. Stone stated, The contact surface is the boundary, and we are trying to both understand the nature of that boundary where these two winds collide and mix, and how they mix. NASA also detected oscillations in the gas, which are caused by our sun, but the researchers also noted that between those eruptions, there was a consistent signature. James Cord stated, The interstellar medium is like a quiet or gentle rain in the case of a solar outburst. It's like detecting a lightning burst in a thunderstorm, and then it's back to a gentle rain. Scientists now believe that there is more activity going on in the interstellar gas than previously thought. Voyager 1 also recorded an influx of high-energy cosmic rays before it ever passed through the heliopause. We had two episodes on Voyager 1 where we were connected to the outside, Stone said in a teleconference on Thursday. In that case, we saw the leakage from outside in. Voyager 2 recorded the exact opposite phenomenon, an increase in low-energy particles from the heliosphere after it crossed the line into interstellar space. We can take another look at the data we have to try to understand what the process is by which the particles which are inside start leaking out, Stone explained in the teleconference. There appears to be a region just outside the heliopause where there's still some connection back to the inside. How does this discovery affect us? The heliopause is a strange place, and the overflowing of particles from both sides of the heliopause brings that to light. Nevertheless, the majority of cosmic rays never enter the solar system after passing the heliopause. Due to the fact that galactic cosmic radiation harms living things, this has been excellent for life on Earth. We now have proof that the radial density gradient discovered by Voyager 1 is a sizable feature around the heliosphere, thanks to the fresh Voyager 2 data. When NASA disclosed that the Voyager spacecraft had unexpectedly and for unexplained reasons shut down in January, the ship had encountered problems. Right before it planned to perform a maneuver in which the spacecraft spins 360 degrees to calibrate one of its instruments on board, Voyager 2 suddenly went dark. NASA released a statement explaining that the Voyager spacecraft was unable to move because two of its power-hungry systems were active at the same time. The exploration missions Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have helped future missions of exploration and continue to teach scientists about the area.
The spacecraft will continue to transmit back data for the next 5 to 10 years on the current extent of the Sun's influence in the interstellar medium, how variations in the solar cycle impact its physics, and how the nature of its particles and field varies with the distance from the Sun. Knowing more about the heliopause will help us find exoplanets and star systems that may host life beyond the Sun. The Voyagers are the first spacecraft to transmit back accurate measurements of this crucial boundary. He is hoping that they aren't the last.